So here's a game field tip. Um, an important part of the feel of your game is going to be the input envelope. And what I mean by this is sort of the sensitivity between your input and the feedback that you're going to get from from your uh, from a game. So how can we visualize this envelope? An envelope is sort of a function essentially, and it's the shape of this function that's going to be determined. So let's visualize this using an animation curve. Uh, that's not an animation curve. Oh. Let's call this input envelope. And let's look over here. So if we want to analyze this envelope, uh, we can, uh, like an, the envelope of a typical input action is going to be something like this. And let's free these guys. Uh, okay, so on the rising part, you're going to have what's called the attack, uh, which is, for instance, as you're uh, pressing the grip button on your uh, on your thumbpad, on your controller. Uh, and this is as the input is rising, and then you have the sustain and the release of it. This is going to determine how the game feels. It's essentially mostly the attack, actually. Um, and uh, it's important to, to consider it. So most people, when they set the, the, for instance, the velocity of your player to just be the input value multiplied by some sort of speed uh, variable, you're going to get this, what's called a, li a linear, um, uh, I don't know, linear function. And this function is going to feel responsive. It's directly going to match what you're putting uh, with your fingers, but it's not going to feel necessarily very natural. So what a lot of people do then is they do what's called an exponential curve. They'll set an input uh, curve that's something like this. It's going to slowly drive it in. And although this makes it more natural, it also tends to make the game feel very sluggish. So it's important to be very careful when you're using like this and only use it when you, you intend for the game to feel more sluggish. A more ideal uh, uh, input envelope would be uh, something like this which is the same as setting it to something like the square root of, uh, to set y to be the square root of x or the cube root of x. So how will we go about this? So first let's do this using the animation curve. So I'm gonna make this run in editor, so it's easier to see. And I'm gonna create a few fields, one of them being, uh, whoop, I did this wrong. Uh, a float that, that we're going to call input. Jesus, my hotkeys today. And let's visualize this with a range uh, modifier. And we're also going to do another one of these for the output. Okay. So now we have an input slider and an output slider. And uh, to do the curve thing, let's set the output to be our input envelope, which is the animation curve, dot evaluate. And dot evaluate will return the, the value of y on the curve based on your input, which is going to be the x value. So let's set this to be the input. <clears throat> so let's see, right now we have a linear function. So we expect the two sliders to move together and that's what we get. But if we want it to be the exponential curve, uh, we're gonna see that it's first, the output's gonna slug behind a little bit and then it's gonna catch up at the end. And if we move this to be uh, this um, square root uh, function, we're going to see something that's the opposite. It's going to be very responsive in the beginning and it's going to taper off at the end. And that's very nice. But in a lot of input scenarios, your range is not going to go from 0 to 1. It's going to go from minus 1 to 1. If we see what happens when you do this, something like a square root is actually not going to work for you in negative values. It's only going to do well on the positive ones. So we need to do an if statement and just make sure that we are dealing with uh, positive values. So let's see if the 
input is larger or equals to zero. We're going to do this that we were doing before. And if not, meaning if input is negative, we are going to do something slightly different, which is we're just going to re reverse this equation over here. Now, if we run this, we'll see that this works both on positive and negative with sort of the same field curve applied to it. How would you go about using math instead of an animation curve? And that's actually pretty easy as well. Uh, all you're doing is setting a, uh, you're multiplying or output or do, applying a function to it. So let's get the output and set it to be, uh, in the case of something like the, the cubic one, let's set it to be the our input. Sorry, that's just not how this works, <laughs> not power. Uh, and we're going to get the input, and I believe, if I remember math right, it should be 1 over 3. Uh, the power of a division should give us the square or the cube root here. Um, and we're going to do the same thing where we reverse the operators for the negative values. And, oh, uh, and you got to set it to be a float. Uh, so we get a lot of in-between values as well. And there we go. We have that nice responsive curve that tapers off at the end. Uh, and you could do, you know, a slightly less responsive one or a slightly less uh, jumpy one if we do the square root. And if you want it to go the other way, if you want it to be sort of that exponential one, uh, you can just set it to... Uh, to be on the power of two or three or four. And yeah, we have that sluggish curve, which is often seen in driving games. Um, and that's it.